Hello, what's going on YouTube? In this tutorial we're just going to cover the orthographic camera and really all you need to know about it. Um, the way I've been setting up the series is just a bunch of random uh, features that you would like to know about LibGDX eventually to make a whole entire game. Uh, for now, just random concepts that would be helpful and eventually we will make a game. So um, if you're interested in watching a whole game being made, then please um, subscribe and hopefully you learn quite a bit about LibGDX. Alright, so in that case let's go ahead and start with the orthographic camera. Um, let's start off with what this is used for. Uh, I did cover this in the last tutorial, but this tutorial is just orthographic camera. So the orthographic camera is used for 2D viewing. Um, if you're drawing basic 2D sprites and it's a side view or it's a top view, kind of game, then you're going to be using an orthographic camera. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and initialize it. Well, private. And I'm just going to go ahead and call it camera. And then we'll just initialize that inside the create method of libgdx. And now this is going to take in both a width and a height. So in the last tutorial, what I did is I took in the whole width of the window and the whole height of the window. Now, in this case, I'm going to do it the more conventional way and the way that's probably going to be easiest for you. Um, what that is, is you just set it to your own values, such as 100 and 100 or 10 and 10 if that works for you. And then you just go ahead and work with that throughout the rest of your game. Um, I usually do 100 and 100 simply because it's easy to picture in my mind. Um, you know, you can do whatever you want. You don't necessarily have to do the size of the window or whatever because it's all going to get resized. And actually, if I can just show how the orthographic camera looks right here, um, no matter what your height is, and no, I mean, like of your window, of your phone, or whatever, you're still going to be going 50 up. It might be compressed if you have like a small height. But it's still going to be 50 units up, 50 units down, 50 units to the right, and 50 units to the left. Now, that is in the case of 100 and 100. If you uh, made your own uh, arguments, then, then that would change, of course. So, yeah, basically what I want you guys to get out of that is if your phone is, for, if, is 800 by 480, or 320 by whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. It's still going to be 50 up. 50 to the right. Um, it might be in a different, uh, I don't want to say percentage, um, uh, whatever. Uh, it might be a little bit differently placed, but it's going to be 50 up and 50 down. It's always going to be the same as long as you resize that perfectly. It's great. So enough about that. Let's actually go ahead and create that camera. 100 and 100. So now that we have our camera, what can we do with it? Well, with the camera now what we can do is go ahead and translate it. That's one of the things that we can do. So as you see with this picture, the origin is right in the middle. If you wanted the origin, uh, 0, 0, to be right in the bottom left, then you translate it. You call camera.translate 50, 50, so that it moves it, well, negative 50, negative 50, so that it moves it this way uh, to the left 50 and down 50. So you'd be good in that case. Um, and that might be a little bit easier to work with for some people. Um, another thing that you can do with your camera is if you're zooming with the scroll wheel, you could always say camera.zoom, and then you can set it to whatever you want. By default, I believe that's set to 1.0 float. Um, and what if you want to follow a target? Uh, you have a sprite moving across the screen and you want the camera to follow it. That's quite a big you know, important, it's quite an important part of games. So what you would do then is you'd go camera dot position uh, dot set, and then that takes in. Um, it's going to take a vector two float and a vector z. I mean, you know, you only really need three elements. You only, well, it wants three elements, but putting in two is fine and leaving the other one zero because that's for three three dimensional. So you leave the last one empty. Um, and 
one other thing about the camera. Whenever you do something like that, that you change the position, or whatever, you have to call camera.update. That's very important because otherwise it won't register that you changed anything. Um, and the final uh, method that pertains to the camera is one that we covered in the last tutorial, which is uh, important for batches. You know, you're going to use batches a lot when you're going to be drawing to the screen. So you always want to call batch dot set projection matrix and then that always is going to take in well almost always and take in camera dot combined I, I mean yeah it's basically going to take that all, all the time um, so that's the final method that's that really stands out in my mind about what you guys should know about the orthographic camera and yeah I mean that's basically it this tutorial was strictly for the orthographic camera just with this one concept that's that's quite a big part of libgdx in reality so i hope you guys got something for this video from this video and i'll see you in the next one thank you